show for you guys to fall asleep and relax with me. Uh, welcome to my bed. Is it unusual for me to make a video from my bed? Maybe I'm gonna regret this, but I thought uh, what better place to make an ASMR video uh, than in my own bed and I have some nice pillows as well. I try to kind of prepare it to make it a bit more homely and um, and there's directly a thing I have to disclose. My voice is pretty much gone. I couldn't talk for the whole day and I have been trying to drink tea for the whole day but I'm not really sure if it worked so much, so I think I'm gonna start off by drinking a bit of tea. It's not that warm anymore, that's good. As you might know, I do watch a lot of ASMR be it intentional or unintentional ASMR, but I also try to seek out information and books and resources about finding more quiet and um, being less neurotic because this is just something that I need to do for me to function in this world in a way. And I've had some people ask me about this, so I thought why not share these resources and ideas and videos that I find during the week and talk about them. I think this would be valuable and interesting to you, maybe. As you might know, I'm a big fan of unintentional ASMR. I, it's kind of a passion of mine. I always look for nice videos and resources and uh, crazy voices and accents and so on. So the first video I kind of enjoyed is by kind of a funny YouTuber who calls himself Mac Daddy Pimp Ping, who is a bit of an older Asian gentleman with a quite deep voice and kind of a nice accent. And he reviews a lot of different things. And in these videos, he opens up some clothes, uh, some clothes that you would expect younger teens to buy, like Supreme clothes as well. And for some reason, he also measures them. So it's quite interesting. So <laughs> check it out. Alright, so this one is the beanie and do uh, be sure to do some uh, legit check. You got this uh, hole punch on the left and right hand side and it is uh, plastic and uh, stitched on there. As you can see, you can see the stitches. Alright, so here it is. Not sure if I can see the wool. It's a nice uh, S uh, stitching. So let's go ahead and uh, measure this real quick. First of all, I'm going to measure from uh, pit to pit. So the pit to pit is about 21 inch my invoice here and come with this uh, ziplock bag put the classic trifer uh, logo right there here is your uh, tag with the product description, the color, and then their size. And there's your barcode. And palace are uh, warning. Let's go and then I'll zip this. Let me show you guys real quick. So on the front head, you got the tri-color. Got like a purplish, uh, blue, and then uh, yellow. 
And you got this uh, nice thick rope for your hood. Did you see the part at the end where he was posing? I think this was pretty nice. So um, aside from that, I also really enjoyed a video by a Polish YouTube channel. It's a guy who is kind of a survival specialist, it seems. And he basically sleeps in a tent uh, in the winter. It's like snowing and it seems to be pretty cold, but he has this great oven where he basically, which warms his tent, but he also makes soup and food and uh, very enjoyable. Even though I didn't really comprehend what he was saying in Polish, I enjoyed this video very much. No to możecie zerknąć jak to wygląda w środku, ile tu jest mniej więcej miejsca. Czyścić zimą trochę śniegu. No i potem wystarczy patelnię położyć albo na piecu, albo na ognisku, tak żeby się rozgrzała do wysokiej temperatury, tak żeby się wysterylizowała. Dzień dobry, mamy nowy dzień. kind of found funny to watch is some monkey who was basically grooming some woman and he was sometimes slapping her on the face. It was pretty interesting to watch but somewhat relaxing as well. And then finally we have a clip by the makeup artist Violette who reviews some products for Goop which is Gwyneth Paltrow's company which is a bit strange but in any case it's just the sound she makes when she basically uses this bottle and when she's doing like this when she's rubbing her hands with this uh, kind of lotion I kind of like it so here's just a few seconds from this clip Dent my skin Just like this is enough. So as soon as I put this cream on, right away I feel this soothing effect. It's like tenderness to my skin. Put it on my neck too. Okay. I also saw some great ASMR this week, some intentional ASMR. First of all, I want to talk about the ASMR videos with female voices that I enjoyed the most. Most notably, one by Latte ASMR, uh, which you might have seen already, but it's just so great that I wanted to mention it. Usually I don't really enjoy these very, the biggest channels of ASMR so much, but, but this one was just so great that I mean, the attention to detail, the production quality, 
it's just getting insane it's just like a documentary basically so I kind of uh, would like to share my favorite moments so basically it's um, it's a piercing cafe I don't even know if that exists um, but basically at first you get a coffee and some cookies and then basically you get your ears pierced which is an interesting combo so here's a few great moments from this video so much for waiting Up here you have a cup of cafe latte with some milk foam on it and some chocolate cookies please enjoy I'll take this and I'll be right back okay cleaning solution Just clean between the cartilages. Oh, right there. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be right like this to this. Are you ready? Okay. Take a deep breath in. Isn't the production quality amazing? I mean, it's out of this world. Um, I really love Latte ASMR. Uh, she's Korean, I think, and the fact that she puts so much effort into like the background and it's almost like she builds an entire set for her ASMR videos. It's insane, and she's she's very successful also. She's almost the and then also what I really liked is a video by Gentle Whispering. I know for some reason I only have the very mainstream channels, but I can assure you I also watched the smaller ones. But I just found it very good. It was about um, her being a consultant, helping you um, with your kitchen. And I just found the props to be really good. And um, the way like these different structures and her tapping on it with her long fingernails. I just very much liked it. Hey, I know I'm here to help you with some kitchen projects, correct? Wonderful. I see the window treatments and bathroom carpets worked out good. But granite is a porous material. It's a natural stone that's just cut into slabs and then transferred to your home. The positives is that it's one of a kind a little bit less wood grain so it's it's a possible this one yeah okay 
so here's another option. Beautiful mosaic made out of little tiny ceramic tiles. Very simple. Very easy to clean. Okay, so finally I have a bit of a smaller channel. Actually, it's not that small anymore, but I like her a lot. Her name is Saray, and she's from the US, and her channel name is Peace and Saray, and she has a great voice. She um, has a daughter, and sometimes she does videos with her husband, and I'm a fan. I like her a lot. This is one where she does a Reiki session and I just like the music, I like her voice a lot, I like how she does this video, so I think it's great. It is I, Madame Sarai, once again with another healing session and today's focus is on the heart chakra. The heart chakra is the fourth chakra. I'm going to spray this room. With this chakra water. It will awaken, awaken, awaken. All of your senses. Smell it if you like. Hmm. It smells really good, huh? What is keeping your hearts? Heavy. It's very cooling on your face. Right. You are worth it. You are worth it. I can tell you are someone that leaves yourself for last. And sometimes you completely forget about yourself. And it's on to the next day. And it's on to the same routine. And then you're depleted of all your energy. And you're wondering why you're so tired. So second of all, I want to talk about uh, male ASMR artists that I enjoyed a lot this week. So first of all, I want to recommend one of my favorite ASM artists. His name is Maddie Tingles. You probably know him from his sneaker videos. But I think he made an excellent role play. He's basically the flight attendant for a first class flight. And I think the whole video is just very well done. And I just love the positivity of Maddie. And he also has some great like Apple Store videos and some um, sneaker videos, as I said. And he's very creative and has a, I don't know, just a very positive attitude that I like a lot. So here it is. Thank you for flying with us. My name is Maddie. Good to meet you. Um, let's get some drinks started. What can I get you? Okay. Okay. 
Anything else? Okay. Yep, no problem. Okay, so I got your got your spray here. Just Alright. And we'll just pour this in. some more amenities um, I actually have a little gift bag for you for flying with us today um, we'll have some snacks it's gonna be it's gonna be a really great flight yeah of course <laughs> yeah um, okay so let's go through this All right, so the first thing in here and these are just um, you know nice travel essential things you may have some of it already um, and that's fine, but now you have two. Okay, good, good. So, got a little basket of snacks here. All right. So, we got some, uh, I'm gonna show you here. We got some, and, and just keep in mind, you literally could have all of this if you want, or just pick whatever. It's, it's complimentary, okay? All right, so first thing, we got some Ritz Bits. And these are uh, cheap cheese ones. Okay. Some Cracker Jacks. And I think another great video is um, for the ladies maybe a bit more, but a friend of mine recommended him. His name is Relaxing Nail ASMR. And he also has a lot of role plays which yeah, maybe are a bit more for either the ladies or the um, Maybe gay man, I'm not sure, but he's an attractive dude, I'm not gonna lie, and he has a nice voice, and um, he has some great role plays where he basically is your husband giving you attention, so just a few seconds from this I want to show to you. I just want to say that I am so proud of you and everything you do. Just how driven you are and how everything is just not done until it's perfect. And maybe I lately, but you are one amazing person. So just so you know, in general, my goal is to show you different types of videos. So I don't want to show you like five different tapping videos or just only female videos or only male ones. So I want to give you like a bit of an assortment that can get you through the week and maybe 
be that you have at least one nice video for every day of the week to yeah, get you through the work week and everything else. And what I will also do is I will create playlists with the best male ASMR, the best female ASMR, the best no talking ASMR with only triggers, and also one list with all of them combined. So um, you can listen to this all to the full videos and can enjoy them at work or when you're driving to work or from work or when you're just trying to relax and trying to fall asleep. I hope this is helpful to you and I'm gonna link these videos in the description of the video below. So third, I wanna talk about trigger videos. So coming back to the ASMR videos, I want to mention some great trigger videos that I really enjoyed this week. So first of all, there's Fred's voice, one of the veterans of ASMR, who is not only does not only look like Thor, but he also has a very nice deep voice and big muscles as well, and he had a great like. Um, razor foam video which is one of my favorite triggers I'm not sure why but a pretty intense and aggressive video but I liked it I think it has good intensity and I think you might enjoy it as well so uh, here you go Also another great video by ASMR Zeitgeist, who is also one of the biggest male YouTubers in ASMR, obviously. But in this case, he just has great production quality, and I just like the wooden sounds he used in this very video. So I thought um, I show you like my favorite moments from this very video as well. So there's Fast ASMR who um, made a pretty nice video which is Halloween themed where she basically touches a pumpkin. I like this too and I like her in general and she's German which I find kind of cool. So here's my favorite moments from this. also very important to me when I decided to make these videos that I wanted to talk about topics and ideas that are 
relevant and that I'm pondering during the week. And I think this is something I'm just naturally a person that thinks a lot and tries to understand the world. And you might be as well. This might be why you are kind of an anxious person, maybe or maybe not. But um, I think all of us sometimes would benefit if we could be a bit more calm and more relaxed in general. But in particular, this one point I thought a lot about during the week, which is, um, is it even a good goal to try to find calm and to find peace of mind? Because you could argue that being too calm, you will be too complacent, you're not going to work that hard, you're gonna, uh, not going to achieve anything in life, and you might just become a lazy sloth that is just sitting in a cave meditating or not doing anything. But I honestly, I think it's that's not accurate, for most people at least. I mean, there might be a few people who are too calm and don't do anything and are just happy with it. But I think most of us in this Western world, um, especially those who enjoy ASMR as well, have another problem, which is they have a hard time finding peace of mind and the maybe achieving part comes more easy to them, maybe. And having peace of mind is a precursor, is a, is a precondition of performing well in any, in any kind of field, be it like if you're into sports, if you want to perform well, you can't be super stressed and nervous. Uh, if you're like a, let's say, a mixed martial arts fighter, it's very important that you have some peace of mind and that you don't have this rage and this stress going on because if you have this, your energy gets depleted way too fast. So for you to perform well, but also for you to have long longevity, you need peace of mind. But actually what I, what I wanted to explore a bit more, and I think that's a very important point, is just how, ex how important peace of mind is because I came to the conclusion that peace of mind is basically the most important thing almost. It's if we want to have a content and fulfilled and happy life, peace of mind is the one thing we should strive for. I'm really certain about it. And I was also inspired in this by a great podcast, which is a bit older, where Joe Rogan talks to Naval Ravikant, who is a very successful angel investor and entrepreneur and I mean he's just I mean very dense information a lot of great insights I can only recommend watching the full thing but I highlighted like a few sections which I would like to point out in this regard all right let's get some more tea So first of all, which I also agree with from the interview, everybody defines happiness differently. Now, happy is one of those words that means a zillion different things. Right. It's like love, right? What does mm -hmm. that mean? Right, I love Can cheese. Oh. So what I would argue is that many people haven't even really considered what happiness means to them. And this way, if you don't know what you're striving for, you can't really achieve it. It's almost impossible. It's like having a goal that you never really defined and just thinking, yeah, this will make me happy. I don't think so. What I do think, however, is that um, happiness oftentimes gets mistaken for something that it isn't, namely some kind of frenetic, ecstatic state that maybe you might experience when you eat the best ice cream or the best hamburger or when you have an orgasm or something. So I think it's pretty um, illogical to think, to equate this with happiness because this is very fleeting and um, if you really want to, it's, it's nothing sustainable. You can't sustain the state for like two, three hours unless you're taking very heavy drugs that have very big downsides. So I would argue, um, and I mean, you can, for, for instance, look at um, manic depressive people or something or bipolar people 
They might sometimes be this happy, but they also make very bad impulsive decisions. So I think believing that happiness means this ecstatic crazy state is just not realistic and we should look for another definition. What for me makes sense is to look the other way and look what does not make me happy. What do I know for sure that doesn't make me happy? And for me it is when I'm frenetic, when my when my mind is wandering around and when I'm being stressed, when I'm thinking about tomorrow, when I have some when I hate myself, when I tell a story about how my life unfolded a certain way, how I have been victimized, how something went wrong. And basically, um, if I don't have any of that, I'm basically happy. I mean, that's the way I define it. It's just, if I don't have these thoughts that torment me, I'm actually already happy. Not in a way that, like, eating ice cream or taking hard drugs would maybe make you pleasure, would be pleasurable for an instant, but in a sustainable way. To me, this is happiness, being free of your mind tormenting you. Not being at peace with myself is unhappiness. Being at peace with myself is basically happiness. And this is also something that I notice for myself. When I'm at peace, I can do whatever I want with fulfillment and happiness and I can basically convert my peace into happiness. My own experience, and this is just personal experience, is the place where I end up the most that is really the one that I, I, I want to be at is peace. Mm. It's just peace. Peace, happy. Yeah, peace, to, to me, peace is happiness at rest and happiness is kind of peace in motion. You can convert peace to happiness anytime you want, but peace is what you want most of the time. That's interesting. You can convert peace to happiness anytime you want. Yeah. If you're a peaceful person, anything you do will be a happy activity. Mm. And by the way, being on social media and engaging politics will not bring you peace. There is nothing less peaceful. Right. This is why being at peace and finding calm is so important. Because, yeah, peace can be transformed into happiness if I chose to. Because whatever I do... If I'm at peace with myself and the world, I can do it with joy and with awareness and this is happiness to me. And also what Naval Ravikant points out an, an interesting point about how we're mistaken about thinking that if we solve all of our problems, we will be happy, but this just isn't the case. The way we think you get peace is by resolving all your external problems, but there's unlimited external problems. So the only way to actually get peace is on the inside by giving up this idea of problems. Who thinks you can get peace by resolving external problems other than politicians? Uh, everybody. That's really? what everybody's struggling to yeah. do, right? Why are you trying to make money? To solve all your money problems. Mm. Why are you trying to win at politics? Because then you'll be at peace because your people will have won. Now that we kind of know what happiness is to us and what it isn't, I think it's still relevant to ask, how do we get there? How do we become happy if we so choose to? And um, I think first of all, we have to um, recognize the danger of desires, as the Buddhists say, and attachment. And Naval also has something great to say about this, I think. Let's go back to desire, right? This is old, old Buddhist wisdom. I'm not saying anything original, but Desire to me is a contract that you make with yourself to be unhappy until you get what you want. Mm. Okay, And I keep that in front of mind. So when I'm unhappy about something, I look for what is the underlying desire that I have that's not being fulfilled. It's okay to have desires. You're a biological creature. You're put on this earth. You have to do something. You have to have desires. You have a mission. But don't have too many. Don't pick them up unconsciously. Don't pick them up randomly. Don't have thousands of them. My coffee is too cold. Doesn't taste quite right. I'm not sitting perfectly. Oh, I wish it were warmer. Uh, you know, oh, my dog, you know, pooped in the lawn. I didn't like that. Whatever it is. Pick your one overwhelming desire. And it's okay to suffer over that one. But on all the others, you want to let them go so you can be calm and peaceful and relaxed. Also very important, I think, is to choose happiness because this might sound kind of 
cliche and kind of marketing speech, but I think it's true that you have to consciously say, hey, ha being happy and fulfilled is something that's important to me. I think a lot of these are choices that we make, and happiness is just one of those choices. Uh, and this is unpopular to say because there are people who are actually depressed, you know, chemically or what have you. And there are people who don't believe that it's possible because then it creates a responsibility on them. It says, oh, now if I'm, you're saying if I'm not happy, that's my fault. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that just like fitness can be a choice, health can be a choice, nutrition can be a choice, working hard and making money can be a choice, happiness is also a choice. If you're so smart, how come you aren't happy? How come mm. you haven't figured that out? That's my challenge to all the people who think they're so smart and so capable. If you're so smart and capable, why can't you change this? And conversely, actually, you would have to say, being calm and peaceful is important to me because that's the basis, the prerequisite for happiness. So everybody who doesn't take being at peace seriously doesn't want to be happy, apparently, right? And then obviously, uh, I think you also need habits that kind of contract your mind from becoming frenetic. You need certain behaviors and certain rituals that help you to find your calm, like your inner peace, but also have rituals that are good for you, like working out and eating good and so on. But obviously, I think it's also important to cultivate habits that help us find our peace, like journaling or meditating. I think this is very important. And me too, I need to remind myself of this every day, because otherwise I forget it. I don't know why exactly, but I always forget this kind of stuff. I mean, what you can obviously do then is to go a bit further into the rabbit hole and ask yourself, is seeking peace of mind for myself and happiness for myself, is it actually the meaning of life? Because you could say it's kind of selfish. It can't be the whole meaning to just be calm and then die. I would kind of say, why not? I mean, if you choose to be a monk or you choose to have a very simple and happy life, it's much better and much more intelligent than running frenetically in all directions and trying to achieve, to achieve, to achieve, because you're going to hurt a lot of people and you're going to hurt a lot of yourself in the process. But I do also see the counter argument that probably Jordan Peterson would defend and he basically says happiness isn't something that we should strive for uh, because it's not meaningful. What's meaningful is taking responsibility for your family, for your community. He interprets this in kind of a Christian sense of helping the um, disadvantaged, um, helping your family, being a good family husband, like a traditional husband or wife raising good kids and I think it's it's a valid point but on the other hand you first have to take care of yourself if you want to be able to help others if you're able to take on more responsibility good for you but only take on as much responsibility as you can handle and so I think for instance if you choose to have to marry and to have children this is obviously going to result in you losing some peace of mind because having stressful children running around and wanting your stuff and your resources and your attention, this is obviously going to rob you of your peace of mind, right? And this is why I think we have to be conscious about the loss of peace of mind that we accept into our lives and we have to consider how much we want to accept because people are different and say some people are very resistant to being stressed and maybe they can take on more stress they can have a very stressful job and a lot of responsibilities but some people if they take on too much stuff that robs them of peace of mind they become very sad or angry or whatever so all the more it uh, emphasizes that finding peace is one of the most important things in a way and you can convert this peace into happiness, I really believe so. So in a way, start with calm. This is why I called this channel Find Calm, because every day I think we have to take time to find calm, because 
that's the prerequisite for having a happy and fulfilled good life. Do you agree? What I also thought I could briefly talk about is um, something uplifting because I feel like we always get way too much negative information like mainstream media is one big machine to make you riled up and unhappy and agitated about something and this is the contrary of our quest to find peace and find calm right i try every day to look for things i can be grateful for and just some uplifting stuff for instance what i found kind of uplifting this week you might have heard about it there's this youtuber mr beast who always does these pretty big youtube videos he started a campaign to plant 20 million trees which i found pretty crazy and basically in this video um, he starts planting them and then asks people to um, donate because every dollar donated basically can lead to one tree being planted and shortly after because as he said our generation or the younger generation oftentimes the older generation say they just talk and they just protest but they don't do anything and here you do something and it's pretty much a given that planting trees is good for um, the environment and it has a lot of positive benefits aside from co2 being transformed and because the ground gets more fertile and better and so on and so on so i think it's a very concrete step to do um, it's great and shortly after Elon Musk also um, donated a million and to me this is something cool because in general I'm a bit cynical about these things about these yeah I donated and this is why I'm a great person but in this case I feel like it shows the real life impact of that the internet can have and that we're really serious about preserving this earth and making it a better place so Hearing this kind of made me happy. And I don't know, another thing that I kind of enjoyed is just the game Death Stranding just came out. It's from this legendary game maker who also made the Metal Gear Solid games. And it's just apparently very strange. It's just completely different to everything else you've seen. It's basically you have to transport packages from one place to the next and I mean it's you don't have weapons it's completely insane but just the fact that this game has been made to me I don't know it's just uplifting because it's a piece of art um, I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy it even but just the fact that it's not the regular FPS game or it's not the regular um, I don't know RPG game where you know this is gonna work I think it's great and um, it's just something about Japan making unique pieces of art that take risks. This reading about it and reading about these weird details. I mean, apparently everything is crazy. You can like, you have this very big backpack on your back and then you have to carry it and fight against ghost-like enemies and other enemies that try to steal your stuff from the back. I mean, none of this sounds very appealing, but just the fact that this is being developed for like several years and um, people creating art, even though maybe it doesn't have the mass appeal, this is something that, I don't know, fills my heart with joy and um, makes me want to continue living and experiencing these things as well and inspires me as well inspires me as well to create something unique even though I will probably never do something very special probably which is fine too is there anything that brought you joy and uh, that you are grateful for this week I think it's really valuable to do this every So what I thought I could also talk about in this show, what I wanted to talk about in this show is also um, real life practicable ideas and strategies on how to find more calm, 
I always try to find new ways to invite more peace and more calm into my life or maybe just live better than before. And one thing that I found very recently that I tested actually is an interesting product. It's a headband which you can buy with Bluetooth as well, but personally I prefer a cable. And I'm going to show some close-up pics as well. And so basically the idea is that you can put it on and listen to podcasts or music or better yet ASMR with it. And basically it has Velcro here. And you basically can put it on your head. This is going to look a bit stupid. And you have to put it over your ears. You can plug it into your cell phone or you can plug it into whatever you use, your, your notebook. And the great thing is you can actually sleep on it because it has flat earphones in it, flat speakers in it. Because one thing I always struggle with is I can only sleep on my side. But if I have normal in-ears in my ear, they hurt really bad. But if I want to listen to ASMR, I obviously need both speakers in my ear, right? So basically, I looked this up. Uh, I don't get any money for this, just so you know. It's just something that I found and that I tested, and I wanted to let you know about. And actually, I was surprised that the audio quality is actually pretty good. It really doesn't hurt at all, because these are completely flat. The um, earphones are completely flat, and um, the headband is pretty comfortable. I mean, it could be more high quality because it's probably something made in China, I would think. There are a few disadvantages. I think sometimes it can get a bit hot when you wear it, when it's warm especially. But during the winter time, um, it might be actually kind of nice. And secondly, I mean, uh, the cable, sometimes I tend to lose it during the night. And sometimes I wake up with it kind of strangling myself. I mean, I'm not really scared of something happening in this regard. But so far, I'm surprised by the, by the audio quality. It's better than expected. And um, it's really great for um, falling asleep on your side. It doesn't hurt in your ear. And I prefer this one to a Bluetooth version, but there's also Bluetooth versions. But, um, and what's cool about this as well is you can either use it as um, a normal headband or as like um, an eye mask. Because, as you might know, um, having a bright light from outside is not good for your sleep and using this cover your eyes is great as well for your sleep. So, yeah, this is a product that I've been testing so far. And what's also great is that uh, when I fall asleep with my normal in-ears on, the cable tends to break after a while. I mean, not literally, but inside for some reason. I mean, I purchased so many earphones after a while it's always the same one of the earpieces doesn't work anymore and this is so frustrating and so far with this one this hasn't happened yet so it's pretty sturdy so uh, yeah all in all i'm pretty happy about this and uh, this was my first um, bedtime asmr video basically and um, i hope this was somewhat enjoyable to you and interesting to you i'm gonna link everything that i showed here in the description of the video and if you have any ideas of things you would want to see um, I would really appreciate a comment and also a like and a subscription if you want to see more of this and um, I really enjoyed making this and it was nice having you here next to me in my bed so thank you so much for watching this